Right now, the vast majority of Truly Wireless earbuds from big name manufacturers are in ear earbuds. But I think that's going to start to change because we're starting to see some new and interesting non in ear earbuds. Now, obviously, AirPods have always been there and they're basically what put Truly Wireless earbuds on the map. And then there are a whole bunch of AirPod clones out there. But what I'm referring to uh, is more the Surface earbuds and the new Galaxy Buds Live which I actually really like and I highly recommend if you know what you're getting yourself into. Now, when it comes to price, Galaxy Buds Live retail for $170, which is $20 more than the Galaxy Buds Plus. And overall, even though I do like these earbuds, I do feel that you're paying a premium for these earbuds. But nonetheless, I do feel that you'll be very happy with these earbuds depending on a very particular set of circumstances and if you know what you're getting yourself into. So if you want to pick these earbuds up, there will be a link down below. Now, first off, let's address the fit of these earbuds. Now, these earbuds look like little beans, but surprisingly, they fit very well. Now, these earbuds fit very similarly to AirPods, as in they don't actually go into your ear canal. They just rest right outside of it. But they're also very small like AirPods. So I'd imagine that if you have a hard time keeping AirPods in because you have larger ear canals, then you might have a little bit of trouble keeping these earbuds in as well. But the thing that makes the Galaxy Buds Alive very unique is that they have these little rubber feet. And what these rubber feet do is that they brace these earbuds against your ears, helping them stay locked in. These feet don't actually hook into any of the ridges in your ears like ear fins do on some other earbuds out there. Now, personally for me, I just use the small feet, but these earbuds also come included with a second larger pair as well. And overall for me, these earbuds fit very well. Now, these earbuds are going to have no problem staying in place whenever you're like walking around or even if you're doing like a light jog. But I did find that these earbuds did need to constantly be readjusted whenever I was working out. But for casual use, these earbuds should be perfectly fine. But more importantly, these earbuds are extremely comfortable and you can wear them for hours on end without any problems. Now, even though in-ear earbuds are fine, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of in-ear earbuds because to me, they do get itchy after like a half hour. That's why I've always been such a proponent for AirPods for long use sessions. And that's why I'm rather excited to see new non-in-ear earbuds hit the market because maybe in a few months, we're going to be able to choose between non-in-ear earbuds and in-ear earbuds, just like how we can choose between on-ear headphones and over-ear headphones. So the major pro about the Galaxy Buds Live being non-in-ear earbuds is that they're extremely comfortable, they don't get itchy when they're in your ears, and you can wear them for hours on end without any problems, just like how you can with AirPods. But the major trade-off here is that these earbuds let in a lot of noise. So if you're going to be listening to music or listening to your podcast while you're out and about or while you're at the gym, you are gonna have to crank the volume up on these earbuds. Now, one of the biggest features about the Galaxy Buds Live is that they have active noise cancellation. But truth be told, the active noise cancellation on these earbuds doesn't really do all that much. It might block out a little bit of constant low frequency hum, but in my experience, these earbuds don't block out a meaningful amount of noise and they certainly don't block out anywhere near as much noise as other ANC earbuds out there like AirPods Pro or the Sennheiser Momentum 2s. But personally, I don't really care because the main selling point here for me is the Galaxy Buds Live's comfort and portability. Now, when it comes to the sound quality of these earbuds, they get the job done, but if you're really concerned about sound quality, you're way better off getting a pair of in-ear earbuds. Like I just mentioned, due to their design, these earbuds let in a lot of ambient noise, even with their ANC turned on, which does affect your music. But also, these earbuds are mostly just bass and vocals, and everything else is just jumbled up in the background. Now, from a technical standpoint, these earbuds are fine because their bass doesn't bottom out and the highs don't get tinny. 
but when it comes to instrument separation, that's a different story. Everything on these earbuds sounds very close together. The main things you're going to hear here is bass and vocals. Now, when it comes to their sound signature, while in their normal EQ, these earbuds have a lot of bass, which I do feel is a little overpowering because it does make it very hard to hear everything else. So personally, I do prefer to use the dynamic EQ setting on these earbuds because it brings the vocals out a little bit and the bass gets reduced a little bit as well. So overall, these earbuds sound good enough to get the job done, but I do feel these earbuds are better for either passive listening or for listening to podcasts and audiobooks or for watching videos. And if you're really concerned about sound quality, then I highly recommend that you go with the Galaxy Buds Plus. Now, even though these earbuds might not sound amazing and the active noise cancellation on these earbuds isn't all that impressive, Everything else about them is, the Galaxy Buds Live have a combined battery life of up to 29 hours if you use them with their ANC and Bigsby turned off. And since I don't really use the ANC on these earbuds and since I'm using these earbuds with a Pixel 4a so I don't use Bigsby, for my use case, these earbuds have a very impressive and above average battery life. And I also find the Galaxy Buds Live combined battery life of up to 29 hours very impressive because they managed to have this above average battery life all while still having a very compact case that you can either charge via its USB-C port on the back or you can even charge it wirelessly. So if you got a phone that supports power sharing, you can always stretch the battery life out on these earbuds. And in general, these earbuds have a very compact case. This case is a few millimeters thicker than either the AirPods or AirPods Pro's case, and it's literally one millimeter thicker than the Galaxy Buds Plus case. But ultimately, the Galaxy Buds Live have a very compact case that you're really not going to notice when you've got it in your pocket. And personally, I do prefer this case over the Galaxy Buds Plus case because it does have a smaller footprint. But I do have one major critique about this carrying case and that's going to be its magnets. I can't help but feel that these magnets are a little weak and every time that I go to put these earbuds away, I'm always a little worried that I'm going to miss and drop my earbuds, especially because the earbuds themselves are so slippery. Whereas with the Galaxy Buds Plus and a lot of other earbuds out there, the magnets in their cases are noticeably stronger so you feel more confident putting your earbuds away. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, it's all around good. These earbuds have a stable connection, but more importantly, each earbud establishes a connection with your phone. So if you just wanna use one earbud at a time, you can use either one, it doesn't matter. And when it comes to watching movies or videos on your phone, these earbuds have zero latency across the board, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. But another major critique I have about these earbuds is going to be their touchpads. Now, both of these earbuds have touchpads, so you can tap, double tap, or triple tap to play, pause, or skip through your music. But unfortunately for me, these touchpads have been rather troublesome. Either it takes a few times for these earbuds to actually play or pause my music, or on multiple occasions, I'll tap on these touchpads once to pause my music, but instead, they will skip a track. But also, there's the fact that 9 out of 10 times when you go to adjust these earbuds, they'll interfere with whatever you're playing, either by pausing your music or skipping your music. And then there's also the problem that basically every time that I put these earbuds in, they're going to start just playing whatever music they can find. So personally, this is why I wish more earbuds would use haptic touchpads like AirPods do. Because even though the haptic touchpads on AirPods are limited, they're very accurate. Now, if you're someone like me who's not really going to use the ANC on these earbuds all that much, you can always remap what pressing and holding on these touchpad does. By default, they'll toggle between ANC on and off, or you can make them so that you can adjust your volume. But ultimately for me, I do find the touchpads on these earbuds to be a little bit on the finicky side and I do find myself just using my phone instead.
Now, one last major critique about these earbuds is their lack of an ambient mode, which is something the Galaxy Buds Plus do have. Now, Samsung claims that these earbuds don't need an ambient mode, and due to their design, these earbuds do let in a lot of ambient noise to begin with. But I would actually argue that these earbuds would really benefit from having a full-fledged ambient mode. Because the point of an ambient mode is being able to clearly hear your surroundings while you're playing your music, or while you're playing a podcast, while you're walking around the city or even if you're just watching a video at home. You want to be able to easily hear whenever somebody's calling your name, or even be able to hear something as subtle as like, let's say, the door knocking. But the weird thing about these earbuds is that under the Labs tab, they have this feature that lets in a little bit of ambient noise. So ultimately, this is just a tease because this feature on the Galaxy Buds Live is like having the ambient mode on the Galaxy Buds Plus set to low. So what I'm getting at here is that I think it would be in Samsung's best interest and make these earbuds even better if they just add a full-fledged ambient mode through a software update. And personally, I would much rather take a quality ambient mode on these earbuds than active noise cancellation. But finally, here's the microphone test. And I gotta say, the microphone on the Galaxy Buds Live is phenomenal. My voice sounds really good, but also this microphone does a really good job of blocking out ambient noise. Because right now, I've got this AC unit turned on. And if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're gonna clearly hear that AC unit. But if we switch back over to the Galaxy Buds Live, it's gone. And if we were to compare the microphone on the Galaxy Buds Live to either AirPods or AirPods Pro, the Galaxy Buds Live are still the winners here because my voice sounds better and they also do a much better job of blocking out that AC unit, which you can clearly hear in the background with my AirPods. So with all that being said, even though the touchpads on the Galaxy Buds Live are a little on the finicky side, their active noise cancellation isn't all that impressive, and they only sound good enough. For me, the main selling points for these earbuds are their overall comfort, above average battery life, and amazing microphone for phone calls, making the Galaxy Buds Live a spectacular pair of everyday carry truly wireless earbuds, especially for people who aren't fans of in-ear earbuds like I am. The only thing that's missing on these earbuds is a full-fledged ambient mode, which Samsung can easily add through a software update. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any of the products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below, and you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.